myself Satish Thalange, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Watson Institute of Technology, Solapur. In today's session, we are going to discuss regarding the workability of fresh concrete. Learning outcomes. At the end of the session, students will be able to explain the behavior of green or fresh concrete from the mixing point up till the compaction. Along with that, he is going to understand the various factors affecting on the workability of the concrete. And along with that, he is able to carry out the relevant measurements of workability for the fresh concrete as per the Indian Student Course guidelines. Finally, he is going to understand and take decisions regarding the factor affecting the workability of the concrete. Now we will see the what is the workability of the concrete. Workability of the concrete is nothing else a behavior of green or fresh concrete from the mixing up till the compaction mainly depend upon the property of the ingredients. Workability of concrete represents the amount of work which is to be done to compact the concrete in the given mold or any size of reinforced section. It is also decided upon the nature of the reinforcement in the RCC component and the type of the compaction method. You should be keep in mind that workability of concrete it should not lose the uh, homogeneity of the mix means it sh there should not be uh, any segregation of the concrete mix. Now you see the workability of the concrete is a term which consists of the four properties of the concrete namely the mixability, transferability and the moldability and the compactability. Now you will see one by one. What is mixability? The mixability is nothing else. It is a mixture where the concrete is in a homogeneous form under the force of mixing. Second one is the transferability. It is the capacity or it is the ability of the concrete to be in the homogeneous during the transportation where the number of forces are acting. And the modability is nothing else. A modability is the behavior or you can say the capacity of the concrete to be in a homogeneous while placing in the mold or in any cross sections of the components, RCC components. And at the and the compactability. The compactability is nothing else. It is the ability of the concrete to be in the homogeneous under the force of compaction or any vib external vibrations for the compaction purpose. Now, the next slide we will going to study regarding the factor which are affecting the workability of the concrete. The workable concrete is which exhibits very internal friction between the particles and particles. And workable concrete is which overcomes the frictional resistance offered by the formwork surface or the reinforcement. Now the factor helping concrete to have the more lubricating effects to reduce the internal frictions for the helping easy compaction are given below. There are seven points which are affecting the factor of which are affecting the workability of the concrete. We'll start with the first that the water content. If the water content is more in the mix, the workability will be good. And if it, the water content will be less, the workability will be poor. Second point is the mixture proportion. Mixed proportion is nothing else, it is the aggregate cement ratio. If the aggregate cement ratio is more, the workability will be poor and if the aggregate cement ratio will be less, the workability will be good. Third point is the size of aggregates. The size of aggregates, if the bigger size of aggregates are there, the workability will be good and if the smaller size of aggregates are there, the workability will be poor. Next is the shape of the aggregate. When we see the shape means the aggregates are in the angular, flat or elongated or the rounded one. Here the angular, flat or the elongated aggregates give the poor workability and the rounded one gives a good workability. Surface structure of the aggregate. The surface structures are divided in two types or you can say two structures. One is the smoother and the second is the rougher. Here the smoother gives a good workability as compared to the rougher one. And the next point is the grading of aggregates. The well graded aggregates give the good workability for the concrete and the poor graded are giving the uh, poor workability for the particular concrete. Now finally the use of admixture. To overcome all this the admixtures are very most helpful for to increase the workability of the concrete. There are various admixtures, chemical admixtures and the mineral admixtures to increase the workability of the concrete. Now the measurement of workability. There are various tests which are been carried out for the measurement of the workability. Workability here, the slum test, compaction factor test, flow test, BB constructometer test, and the Killy ball test are there. 
Now in today's session we are going to discuss regarding the slum test to determine the consistency of the concrete mix of the given properties. Slum test is the most commonly used method of measuring the consistency of concrete which can be employed either in the laboratory or at the site. See these are the I scores which are defining the specification for the apparatus for the slum test and the uh, second IS is helpful for to carry out the methods or can this carry out the steps for the slum test. You should keep in mind the nominal maximum size of aggregate should not exit 40 mm for the slum test. Now this is an image of the apparatus and the steps to be the performed for the slum test. In the first image we see the a base plate and the cone with along with the tamping rod. This is the apparatus which is used for the uh, slum test and in the second image you are observing the dimension and the measurement of the slum. Here the cone sizes of a uh, cone's dimension its height is 30 centimeter its bottom diameter is 20 centimeter and its top diameter is 10 centimeter and the tamping rod it is of 16 mm and its length is of 60 centimeter. Here the third image is showing the steps to be carried for the slum test in the first step before going to the first step you should clean the inner surface of the cone and you should apply the oil and the first steps here in the first steps you should pour the you should fill the particular cone with the concrete and the, as shown in the particular figure one here after pouring it you should give the 25 blows and in second you are observing that again the concrete is poured for up till 11 here again you have to give the 25 blows and at the in third image you have to fill the whole cone and you have to give the 25 blows or you can say strokes after giving stroke you should level the particular concrete at the top of the cone and you should clean it the excess concretes by the you can say by the tamping rod after cleaning you should also clean the concrete which is at the base plate or on the base plate and after this you should lift the cone in the vertical direction and in the last image there it is a method or you can say it is a measurement of the slum is shown in the last slide. Now let us select the correct answer for these two MCQs. Hope so you have selected the answer as shown in the bolded and the darker form. Here there are the types of concrete slum test. There are four types true slum, zero slum, collapse slum and the shear slum. What is true slum? It is a slum which is retaining the shape of the cone but it subsides very little. That is a true slum and the zero slums it retains uh, its shape as it is because of its stiffness and the collapse slum as its name it is the collapse it totally the concrete will collapse on the base plate and the shear slum is nothing else it there there is a subside or there is a, a fall in the concrete in the inclined plane as shown in the shear slum in out of these four a true slum is desirable for the concrete for the concrete work now this is a how to measure the slums of the concrete or concrete and define the slum for the collapse shear and the true now degree of workability with respect to slum this is very important degree of workability is you are very low low medium high and very high the slum measurements are as follow which are very helpful for the carrying out the concrete work as per the requirement from the client now the recommended value of the slums for various type of constructions are as given in table type of construction reinforced foundation wall and the footing at the slum ranges from 20 mm to 80 mm plain footing and the subs, subs, uh, substructures wall again the slum is 20 to 80 mm beams and the reinforced walls here again the slum ranges 20 to 100 building columns 20 to 100 pavement and the slab 20 to 80 and the mass concrete 20 to 80 mm these are very helpful guidelines to carry out the uh, concreting work as per the requirement for the client these are the references for the today's session thank you